to introduce our speaker via video is Lynn Castle, Executive Director, Art Museum of Southeast Texas. Good afternoon, fellow Rotarians. Uh, it is my pleasure to introduce our guest speaker today, uh, Caitlin Clay, who is the curator of exhibitions at the Art Museum of Southeast Texas. Caitlin was promoted to the curatorial position in October of 2020. As curator of exhibitions, she organizes all exhibitions at the museum, including four to eight shows in the main galleries each year. She also oversees projects in the curatorial and collections departments, including a $50,000 IMLS grant to photograph and digitize the John Gaston Ferry Collection of Mexican folk art. Before her promotion to her current position, Caitlin worked as the AMSET Registrar and Collections Manager. As Registrar, she oversaw the safety and movement and the storage of AMSET's permanent collection, as well as loans and special exhibitions. A Beaumont native, she received her Bachelor of Arts in Art History with a business concentration in 2016 from the University of Dallas. Her bachelor's thesis focused on Roy Lichtenstein's use of appropriate appropriations throughout his career, with its emphasis on his interest in Cubism. In 2018, she graduated from Texas Christian University with a Master's in Arts and History degree with a specialization in modern and contemporary art. Her master's degree thesis explored glass blowing as an art practice and examined our contemporary definition of sculpture through a comprehensive study of Dale Chihuly's artworks. Caitlin has presented papers at Ohio University, the University of Texas at Tyler, the University of Dallas, Southern Methodist University, Texas Christian University, she has also interned at the Nasher Sculpture Center, the Amon Carter Museum of, of American Art, and the National Heise Glass Museum, and the works of Ohio Center for History, Art, and Technology. Please join me in welcoming curator Caitlin Clay. Good afternoon, fellow Rotarians. <laughs> my pleasure to introduce our guest Caitlin, welcome to the Rotary Club of Beaumont. Hi, oh, thank you so much. Thank you for having me as your speaker today. We're excited so, to hear what you've got going for us. Absolutely. So as uh, Lynn mentioned, I'm going to walk you through our current exhibitions in the main gallery. Um, this spring, we're exhibiting Delita Martin, and her exhibition is titled Conjure. So let me just... Switch the camera. Sorry, one second. Here we go, okay. So this will be a virtual walk through the exhibition. Um, if you were entering the museum, and can you all hear me clearly? Okay, wonderful. Um, if you were to enter the museum, you would see our title wall announcing the exhibition. And then you would see the gallery space. So Delita Martin is a Houston-based artist. She is the first African-American woman to have a solo exhibition at AMSET. So we are so proud of this milestone, um, especially because she is such a talented artist. Delita received her BFA from Texas Southern University and her degree was in drawing. Um, she also received her MFA, her Master of Fine Arts from Purdue University and it was in printmaking. So the work you're looking at here is the first piece titled A Gathering of Birds. And I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see it better. 
So Delita creates what's called monoprint. She considers herself a printmaker, but she only makes one unique print. So traditionally in printmaking, um, you would make several editions um, that were nearly identical or similar to each other, but that is not what Delita is doing. She is creating singular artworks. And so uh, those are called mono prints, one single print. And the way she creates her prints is that she'll start by um, using screen printing to create the background. She'll also draw her portrait sitter. So you can see here just how lovely and talented she is and her use of charcoal and graphite. She will then layer um, different cutouts that she's made. You can see in this piece, the birds, those are a wood block cut that have been um, pasted to the print. She also hand stitches and collages on each of her prints using decorative paper. And she'll also sometimes use a gold leaf or a silver leaf in her prints. And in this piece in particular, we don't see the gold leaf or silver leaf. Okay. There are 21 mono prints in this exhibition. This is an entirely new body of work for Delita. So I like to uh, tell guests when I see them in the gallery space that while we were all home, working from our laptops, sitting on the couch during a pandemic, Delita was in her studio every day from 5.30 in the morning till 7.30 at night, creating this brand new body of work. And this is the first time these works have been exhibited. So seeing them here in this exhibition um, is the first time for visitors or viewers nationwide to have a chance to see these artworks. So the piece you're looking at now is titled Nightbird. It is next to another piece titled Redbird. And these are both self-portraits of Delita. In this one you can see she's used the, used the gold leaf on the earring. She's utilized graphite and charcoal for the portrait. You can see the decorative paper again with the hand stitching. And get a nice close up of that. And what might be difficult to see from the video is that some of these pieces are very large. So these two are the smallest works in the exhibition. And they're probably about three foot by four foot. But the rest of the artworks are about six feet tall. So this one's titled Blue Spirit, or Blue Star, I'm sorry. And what's so incredible about Delita's pieces is not only her craftsmanship, but also just the colors. And it's a little bit hard to see here because of the reflection, but just her attention to detail and her use of different types of art making processes. You can see the beautiful work on these hands. more decorative paper with hand stitching. So in Delita's practice, she focuses on depicting African American women and children, who you'll see here throughout the exhibition. And she uses signs and symbols and colors that reflect her African heritage, but also her life growing up here in America. So Delita 
spent a good portion of her life in Arkansas. Um, she was raised as a Southern Baptist and spent a lot of time growing up with her mom and her grandmother. And so the women in her life really shaped her as an artist. And each of these women who are models in the exhibition, um, she's created or she's formed a relationship with. So it's really important in Delita's art making that she gets to know the people she's interacting with and depicting in her artworks. And this one's really lovely with the different types of decorative paper. You can see those there. Another really great element of this artwork in particular is how Delita has started to go beyond the borders of the paper. And you can see she's used the fabric and it's extended off of the edge, sort of into the confines of the frame. This is a portrait of Delita's mother. She has a wonderful stern expression. Um, I was told she was not pleased to have her portrait taken, as I'm sure most mothers are when asked to participate in such a thing. You can see the gold leaf here again in the earrings. So Delita's artwork is full of symbolism. Um, she really loves to use the circle as a symbol for the moon as, and also a symbol of woman. The color blue is used really often, and I know I'm showing you a red one at the moment, but um, Delita is really interested in how women exist in a duality. So they exist both in the physical world, but also in a spiritual realm. And that's really reflected in this piece, which is our largest piece in the exhibition. It's uh, six foot by eight foot. I'll see if I can back up enough so you can see it. This work is titled Trinity. And above it is a quote from Dr. Kelly Willits. Um, it says, some spirits won't come unless you call them. So in this piece, we really get a sense of that duality that I was talking about just a minute ago um, with the color blue symbolizing the spiritual realm, these abstracted forms, which for Delita, represents um, the sort of in-between nature of the two realms. We get the circles and the earrings symbolizing the moon. We also have this incredible sort of gazing ball with birds in it. And for Delita, birds represent the human spirit. And depending on what the birds are doing, represents the state of the human spirit. So if the bird is flying, then the spirit is free. If this bird is caged, represents um, conflict within the spirit. In this face, you can see sort of a reference to African masks. Delita is very interested in private or hidden um, women's societies in Africa. And so the Mende mask, which is worn by women in traditional rituals in Africa, is often also represented in her work. So these are the back two galleries. We'll start with this piece on my left. It 
This piece is titled Resting Place. And I love in this piece the attention to her hair. This piece also has some beautiful decorative paper towards the bottom. This piece is titled Spirit and Self. And it's one of the pieces where you see uh, that duality combined with the references to African heritage and ritual practice. Um, really well thought out and presented. So Delita currently works as a professional artist. She used to be faculty at the University of Arkansas in Little Rock, um, but a few years ago decided to leave the faculty and return to Texas so that she could pursue her art making full time. Um, while she was also making these works for the exhibition last year, she also put together her own uh, grant foundation, which is assisting minority artists through providing funds to help with uh, getting art supplies and any other needs they might need, such as childcare support. This piece is titled Sitting in Silence. And like I said, these works are about six feet tall. So they have a major impact on the viewer when you walk into the gallery space. They're very monumental. This piece is Mirror Mirror. It's one of my favorites. And you can see she's actually used reflective paper in the mirrors. And mirrors are another symbol for Delita. Um, they are an object that allows you to access the spiritual or abstracted realm. And so throughout this exhibition, you'll see mirrors used um, as fashion elements or as objects uh, held by the portrait sitters. This piece is titled Her Place. I love the pants on this one, along with the floor design. We'll get a good close up of that. So, so along with this exhibition, Delita has self-published a catalog of all the works and it is available here at the museum. And as part of our programming, we had a virtual panel discussion with her and three other uh, contemporary female black artists about two weeks ago. And we recorded it, it is, it is accessible on our YouTube page. If you're interested in watching it, it's about an hour and a half. But Delita and the three other artists, um, Love you, Olivia, Ann Johnson, and Rebea Bain, work as a collective together. And their collective is called Roo. Uh, it's actually named after the food staple you make for gumbo and etouffee. And they each exhibit individually, but also exhibit it collectively. And so in our panel discussion, we talked about their experiences as uh, female Black artists. There are different art making processes. They all enjoy printmaking, but they are interdisciplinary artists. So they work in different mediums with different materials. And also how recent uh, social changes and historical narratives have affected their art making and um, how they think society can improve on telling the stories of black men and women. I'm gonna zoom in one more time on this piece just so you can see how lovely the skirt is. 
Um, this is made up of decorative paper and also these ravens or crows that have each been individually printed, cut out, and then glued over each other. And you can see this piece, the skirt comes all the way off the edges of the paper. Move on to this one. This piece is titled Feathers. It's a little bit of a smaller piece, but has an equally great impact. And you can see a wonderful expression, these beautiful gold hoop earrings. And then uh, the birds again used as sort of this feathered collar. Another partner piece. This is Mirrors in Sky. You can see the mirrors here again. So growing up, um, I think I pre previously mentioned Delita was raised Southern Baptist, but her grandmother used to teach her about sort of ancient and contemporary African rituals. Um, and Delita wasn't, you know, she was young, so she wasn't completely aware of what her grandmother was teaching her in terms of importance. One of the stories she likes to tell is that her grandmother had these mason jars she kept on one of the bedside tables. And in the mason jars, there were all these little objects. And when Delita would visit with her grandmother, she would empty the objects out onto the bed and describe a story that went along with each one. And it could be anything from a button from her grandfather's uh, coat to a scrap of a blouse or a dress. And Delita said that later as an artist, she realized the importance of keeping these small objects that the stories associated with them imbued them with sort of a mystical element um, beyond nostalgia and sentimentality. They were for her grandmother objects that sort of conjured memories and spirits. And so that's sort of where the title of this exhibition comes from, Conjure. Um, conjuration as a historical practice began with the Romans and can be seen throughout history in many different societies and cultures. Uh, it was prevalent in African heritage and ritual. And conjuration, just broadly defined, referred to using an incantation or an object to bring forth a spirit. So during the 17th through 19th centuries, when Africans were traded through the slave trade and came to the Americas, they brought with them these practices such as conjuration. And those rituals were combined with Judeo-Christian beliefs as well as Native American rituals and practices. And these combinations resulted in some of the more contemporary ritual practices we see today, such as hoodoo, voodoo, um, root work, although root work is historically something that's been practiced for many centuries. You can see in this piece, the mason jars. So for Delita, her portrait sitters are real women with real experiences, but because she's drawn them at such a large scale and added these different symbols and objects and decorative papers and outfits, um, they are 
in essence, also conjurations that she's brought forth. This is sort of the one time you see maybe a gender neutral or a male form in the works here at the exhibition. And I have one more piece. This piece is titled Offerings. It's another self-portrait. You can see her sitting on sort of a gold stool with almost like a raindrop pattern in the background. She's holding a basket in her hands. And so that's all the pieces here in Conjure. I will take you one gallery over. So the museum has an education gallery called the Con Take Part Gallery. Uh, sometimes we use this to exhibit um, artists' sketchbooks or to describe the process of um, an artist's art making. Delita asked if we could actually put an installation in this space for her from, I believe, 2018. It is titled The Dinner Table, and it includes over 300 individual dinner plates. Uh, the stipulation is that you have to exhibit at least 150, so we have a little under 200 here at the museum, just because of the need for space and space restrictions. But each dinner plate has an individual drawing of an African-American woman or child. They are all different. And they are drawn onto the face of the plate directly. A lithographic crayon. So a lithographic crayon is really waxy and is often used in printmaking to make lithograph prints where you print you draw onto a large stone and then you pull your print off of the stone. So if you start it off in drawing and get into printmaking, it's a really good uh, printmaking process to start off with. I'll see if I can back up some. So this installation, the dinner table, typically has a full dinner table included in the installation. Due to COVID, we asked Delita if it would be okay only to exhibit two of the chairs seven feet apart from each other so that people could sit and speak with one another. And, you know, typically when the full table is on display, she invites visitors to all sit in conversation. Um, but like I said, we stuck to two of the chairs. And if we're thinking about art history, this piece references Judy Chicago's piece at the Brooklyn Art Museum uh, titled The Dinner Party. And if you go back in your minds to your first art appreciation classes, uh, Judy Chicago was a well-known female artist during the 1960s and 70s who created this mixed media piece titled The Dinner Party which includes, I think, about 45 different women. Um, each has a setting, so there's a plate, a ceramic plate, and each one is individual, with a placemat that's been hand-embroidered. And when Delita was learning about this piece, she realized that there were only four African-American women represented by Judy. And historically, African-American women have been left out of the narrative of history. They're not fully recognized for their achievements. 
for their contributions to society and how impactful those have been. And so the point of this installation was to present viewers with individual African-American women who Delita has known or formed a relationship with over the course of creating the installation and to give them a face and a portrait that everyone could look at and recognize, as well as having a dinner table where people could sit and discuss, you know, any topic that they wish to talk about, anything from history to culture to society, um, to just getting to know one another, which I think is a really important element to Delita's work, is getting to know the African-American women she's depicting and showing their portraits to viewers to demonstrate this lack or purposeful erasure of Black and African American women from our historical narrative and also from their achievements and work in contemporary society. Okay, so that's the entire exhibit. I'm just gonna go back around. Hi, Brian. Hi, TJ. Hey. <laughs> I'm gonna grab my mask real quick. And I'm excited to hear y'all's questions. Hey, Caitlin, I, I have a, a couple of questions. Uh, first, thanks for being here. That was very informative, uh, a great presentation. I look forward to seeing the exhibit. This is more maybe a general question is, and it probably varies, but how, how, for how long does each exhibit uh, last in the art museum? How many exhibits do you do a year? And how do you decide which artists you will feature in your exhibits? Okay, those are great questions. Let me just open the door real quick and then I can answer those questions. So the exhibitions at AMSET and our main galleries typically last anywhere from 10 to 12 weeks. Uh, Delita's exhibition opened on March 13th and it will close, sorry, I'm get, going to my office. It will close May 23rd. So unlike some larger museums like the MFAH or the Stark Museum, um, our exhibitions quarterly. Um, so we can have anywhere from four to eight exhibitions in our main galleries um, in a fiscal year. Sometimes we'll have a solo exhibition like we have with Delita. Um, a lot of times we'll actually do two exhibitions at the same time and just divide the galleries two and two between the artists. So let's see. Our next exhibition will be another solo artist who you may be familiar with. Um, this summer we're going to have David Cargill um, take over the entire space that you just saw. So, uh, that's going to be really fun. So let's see, that was how long they are. Um, deciding the artists. So we work anywhere from two to three or four years out on our exhibitions. Um, I think a lot of people are actually surprised to know that um, I can't just put up a show of anyone you know, in the next like five months. And uh, you may know this from speaking with Lynn, but a lot of times our exhibitions are grant funded, which means that we're writing a grant for an exhibition a year to two years in advance. And that's mostly because the grants can be so large, but also because the grant funding committees are receiving applications from people all over the US and uh, need some time to go through the applications and choose who they'll be funding. In terms of who we choose, um, AMSET is a regional museum. Um, a lot of people don't realize that museums actually have uh, exhibiting policies. So if you're familiar with the MFAH, um, it is what's called an encyclopedic museum, which means they collect artwork from all over the world, from all different time periods, and uh, AMSET is not encyclopedic, we're regional. So we focus on exhibiting artists from Texas, Louisiana, and Mexico. And it's a little bit flexible in that you don't necessarily have to be like living in those three regions right now. 
but if you impacted our art world in some way, um, or you lived here for a long time and you taught at a Texas university um, or at a Louisiana university, then in a way you would be eligible as an artist to be shown in our galleries. We're also looking at artists who are represented by art galleries. Um, representation through a gallery is a really great way to demonstrate that you're at a certain point in your career. Um, I'd say that most artists who have gallery representation are, you know, at least midway into their career. Um, and so gallery representation, sorry, normally comes um, after you've reached a certain point of your career because your art has evolved um, to a certain quality and you're demonstrating a certain knowledge of your own work. So we're looking at artists who have gallery representation. That's not always the case. It doesn't have to be a requirement that's met, mostly because AMSET also uh, collects and exhibits folk art. And so folk artists typically don't have any kind of art education let alone have representation by a gallery. So a question, um, is the art in the printmaking realm gaining popularity um, as compared to the traditional oil and watercolor painting? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I actually was having a discussion about that with my fiance who is a painter. And uh, he also worked for an art handling company for a while and went to the Venice Biennale, which is one of the preeminent worldwide or international um, art fairs in the world. And he said how surprising it was when he went to the art fair that there really weren't that many paintings. There was a lot of sort of interdisciplinary or mixed media artwork. So as an institution, we're always looking to exhibit a variety of uh, mediums. Um, and also a diversity of artists, you know, men, women, non-binary individuals, uh, people of different ages and diverse backgrounds and different races. In terms, more specifically to answer your question, I'd say that contemporary artists are leaning away from traditional art making um, in that they'll use traditional art making processes to create sort of interdisciplinary or mixed media artworks. So like with Delita, we saw a variety of art making processes combined together to create these individual unique artworks. Um, I'd say from having been in school pretty recently and also um, going to school with people who were pursuing degrees in art at the time, that many of them are leaning more towards non-traditional methods such as video art, um, installation art, and um, like mixed media sculpture. Do we have any other questions? Thank you, Caitlin, for showing us that today. It was absolutely beautiful.